Okay, very good morning. Wednesday, 28th of April. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Going to get you up to speed on a couple of things to close on Wall Street. We had some aftermarket earnings for some of the tech giants like Microsoft and Alphabet. Uh, we're also going to get you um, up to speed on Australian data overnight, some more tensions brewing in the Middle East, i.e. with Yemen and Saudi Arabia. Uh, there's been an update on the situation on the port strikes in Chile, which has led to a bit of a decrease in copper prices coming off their recent run up higher in the overnight session. Uh, and then things that are coming out today, namely that of the FMC, what can we expect from Jerome Powell and his colleagues today uh, later on. And we've also got Biden's American family speech as well due today. Uh, but starting off with just generally what the charts look like for the open. And it's been, I would say, relatively quiet. Um, as we know, it's kind of mid and second half of the week where we start to get some more of the key kind of potential catalysts, uh, i.e. the Fed, the GDP data, the Eurozone inflation growth data on Friday, uh, as well as a batch of, of more large cap earnings still to come. Um, but at the moment, if you were looking at these major currency pairs, um, range plays have definitely been the order um, of the last two sessions. You can see here cable just really respecting that between in the futures. 138.70 up to around the 139.22.30 area, kind of similar in the euro uh, as well. Uh, one currency that has seen in the major dollar pairs a bit of a breakout has been dollar yen. Uh, there was an area there of the course of the last several trading sessions that we were keeping an eye on, which lined up uh, respectively of around the R2 yesterday at around 108.50 in the futures. Uh, and that had a bit of a break out through then the, the latter part of yesterday's kind of post European exit into the North American later trading hours. Uh, and that's just continued to push on uh, up to finding some resistance from those previous highs that we saw back on the, the 16th. Uh, just had a bit of profit taking in the Asia Pack session on the back of that uh, and just came out to retest now as we go into the European morning. But uh, quite a nice move materializing over the last couple of sessions in, in dollar yen there. Um, in terms of the close on Wall Street last night, uh, it's not really too much to comment on. Um, the S&P and Dow are basically absolutely flat. The Nasdaq um, kind of sounds more sensational than it is. It was the first down day we've had in, in three sessions, but it was down only about half a percent. Uh, and actually, if you look at a lot of these US indices, you know, if we look at the S&P here, you can see in the, on the right hand side, again, respecting a range so far for the week. So consolidation at these record high levels. So still keeping an eye here for any more Definitive break really of this area of around 41.85 and a quarter, which as you can see, the kind of pullbacks on the test of that level are getting more shallow, uh, which might be then indicative of a, of a push up. Again, catalysts could be uh, forthcoming data or, or earnings releases. And then for the NASDAQ, obviously it's being constrained to a certain degree by this upside level around four, just over 14,050. Um, that was the area that really capped last week's price activity. Uh, we had a bit of a test uh, that came in the very early hours of yesterday's session. Uh, drop off at the open yesterday, but we kind of recovered and we're in a short term trading band between 13,953 and 79 on the upside for the, for the moment. But again, companies like Apple, Fa uh, Facebook, they're all reporting aftermarket today, will likely act as, 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 as main catalysts there. Then oil prices <coughs> had the JMMC yesterday. I, I think unsurprisingly, they're just kind of the expectations just rolling over on the current supply packs. So it keeps it in play for the moment. Uh, I don't think they can make any other choice given what's going on with COVID and likes of India and other emerging economies at the moment with the risks that that, that carries for the demand side. So oil remains uh, elevated. And this comes irrespective of the fact that we had API inventories last night just very quickly look at those. We had a build of 4.319 million in the headline figure last night. That was actually much larger than an anticipated draw of 200,000. Cushing build 742, gasoline draw 1.288 million. Um, if you actually look at the price of oil, we did come off a little bit um, during the overnight session. This is when the data came out, it was really when we were peaking in price up at around 63.30. Uh, we dipped overnight in Asia, found some support at a, a relative um, technical area of, of interest, which was that previous low on the 19th. 
you can see tests on the 20th and also in yesterday's session so uh, a bit of technical relevance to around 62 67 and then we've had a bit of a bounce up and just keeping an eye back to uh, that previous level uh, as well that we were trading uh, late in the US hours at 63.30. All right, well, I'm going to run you through the news um, as per usual on the live stream that the um, senior traders will put on um, for the community from 8 till 10 a.m. Uh, they will go through the charts from a more technical perspective and, and some of the trade setups of the day. Uh, the other final product, just to mention before I do look at the news, is gold. Um, to me, it looks more technical than anything else. We had a bit of a breakdown in price through the early part of the Asia session as we went through the low from the prior Asia session. And that's just taken out the weekly low that was seen around 1768. And so gold's seen a bit of uh, volatility and uh, generally uh, lighter volumes and exacerbating some of that move during the Asia pack session. But worth keeping an eye on some of those downside levels. The dollar, the touch firmer this morning actually. Uh, and the Dixie is coming up to retest up at around yesterday's high. Uh, the Dixie is currently trading up just shy of two tenths of 1%. So I would be watching that because that could exert some downside pressure on some of these major currency pairs uh, as well, which would be something I'd be keen to, to keep an eye on. All right, so quick wrap up of what was happening last night. And we had Microsoft earnings and I'm just going to go over these in a very kind of top level fashion and just get you up to speed in terms of the aftermarket reaction. The EPS from Microsoft 203 against expected 178. Revenues also slightly beat expectations at 41.7 million. Q3 sales were up 19% lifted by robust demand for cloud computing services that exceeded expectations 15.12 billion against around 14.86 billion expected on the street. They had their strongest quarterly jump in personal computer shipments, also a decent beat on expectations, biggest, biggest jump they've seen there in more than two decades. So actually very good numbers from Microsoft, um, but nonetheless, their shares, as you can see here, actually traded down, well, down about 2.6% in aftermarket hours, but they were actually down in excess of three and a half at one point. Um, I guess Microsoft's been a little bit of a victim here to its own success. The share price on the year before these this earnings report has hit, they're up about 25% year to date, never mind pandemic. So I, I think this move is, is very much contained. The numbers um, were, were really quite positive, if anything. So I think it's just the fact that on the revenue side, on the street, there were some looking for even better numbers. And I guess when you perform so well, just generally... Um, the market expectations are so hyped that, that it's almost inevitable you're going to come off a little bit. But again, in context, even if we open um, we open on the NYSE and we're, we're on the NASDAQ, we're down about 2.6%. Uh, we're still going to be up about 22% on the year anyway. So generally positive despite the aftermarket bump. Alphabet, um, Q1, EPS 26.29% against expected 1570 absolute blowout revenues 55.31 billion against expected 51.55 billion powered by an increase in digital ad spending by businesses looking to take advantage of the ongoing pandemic reopening they also announced a 50 billion dollar share repurchase program of their class c stock uh, shares were if I just quickly flip over, up <coughs> in excess of 4%. The real outlier here uh, on the upside, they really uh, did firm up quite aggressively in their in post-market trade. Uh, AMD was another one. <coughs> Beat on the EPS and revenues. Uh, as it says here, they gave a bullish forecast. They raised their 2021 revenue outlook. And they were also trading up just shy of 4%. And then Visa was another major larger cap earnings report. They were up about 1% following their numbers. So looking out for um, today, we pre-market, um, one of the bigger Dow components, you've got Boeing, Spotify, something quite quite watched in terms of those invoke names as well, pre-market. Then aftermarket, I'll go through these in a lot more detail uh, in the Amplify community before the release, but you've got Apple, Facebook, Qualcomm, probably the big three to keep an eye on. 
before I um, look at the calendar for the rest of the day, just a quick wrap up of some other things, just so you're aware from the overnight session. I did briefly mention the Australian data overnight. And I must stress that um, the Aussie weakened overnight and then quickly reversed those gains. And we're trading pretty much at the highs in Aussie now. So very limited sustained reaction here after the headline Australian CPI overnight came in at 0.6% quarter on quarter. Expectations were for 0.9%. Uh, core inflation decelerated at the slowest pace on record as the government programs lowered costs in the economy. <clears throat> but wages growth remains subdued. Demand for things like services still recovering to their pre-pandemic levels. So, yeah, the, the currency slid after the report, but it was taken back very quickly uh, indeed. So um, I don't think it was a... Um, I, a long lasting impact that would see on the back of this evident in the price that's already materialized so far. Uh, the other thing, just briefly to mention, Yemen's Houthis say they fired a drone at a southern Saudi airbase. Uh, what this is talking about is the city of uh, Kamis Meshate, which is in the southwest. It's very close, really, to the Saudi Yemen border. Um, that was claimed, this drone trying to attack a military airbase in the Saudi Arabian city from the Yemen's Houthi militants, uh, is what they're claiming. A bit of context, it's the fifth largest city in Saudi Arabia, definitely more, um, so more synonymous with the, the, the airbase that's situated there, rather than anything to do with the Ramco, like oil infantry or infrastructure, anything of that degree. Um, so this hasn't really had too much of an effect. I mean, just mindful of, you know, just commenting on this stuff because it is quite sensational headlines. It's ongoing, very frequent activity. We're seeing this geographic region of this nature. So it's not particularly new, but it does come into context with oil just tapping on the ceiling of that previous uh, late US session high at 63.30. So just to be aware of. Um, and then the other thing in copper prices, <clears throat> as I mentioned, uh, I did put this out on Twitter as well because I just happened to be sat at my computer as I do at 11.30 at night <laughs> and uh, I saw the news break and it was that the, Chow the Chile President Panera said last night he'd signed into law the opposition-led bill allowing a third drawdown from pensions and if you remember it was poor workers in Chile that had called for strikes on Monday in protests over the President's move to try and block that bill um, which did actually contribute to some of this ongoing uptick uh, that we've been seeing in copper. I mean, copper is rising on a variety of different things from China to, to global reopening to Biden's infrastructure plan, but it was an element that was helping. And I, don't, I think when a price like a, an asset like copper, you know, you don't need much in a reason to just book some profit after we've seen a real acceleration in prices, particularly over the last couple of sessions. And so during the Asia PAC session, that's exactly really what's happened. We've just come off um, from, as you can see here, through 2, 2 a.m. London time. We broke through what was yesterday's low point. Uh, and now in the copper future, just finding some resistance, you can see here right on that S1, which is a really nice technical resistance actually now. You can see you've got the S1, you've got the overnight respect on multiple tests on that resistance level with back on that high from uh, what we had on Monday and a support resistance turned support on that session. So yeah, interesting to keep an eye there. Downside, obviously you've got to have a test on the range from the Asia session, uh, 4.41.75. Any breakdown through there would be targeting around 4.40.60, um, which would encapsulate those areas from, from the beginning of the week for copper prices. Um, and then the Fed, I guess is the final thing to talk about because the calendar is relatively quiet. And so the Fed's coming out usual time, 7 p.m. Um, and this isn't really going to take me too long to explain because really I'm not expecting a great deal. I think the Fed have gone to great pains to really stress the point that despite uh, the, the the kind of the cause for a more optimism or positive outlook given the, the state of some of the recent economic data points that we've had, that's really going to be epitomized by the strength in the increasing growth picture which we'll get with the Q1 advanced GDP tomorrow in the US. The point being is the Fed aren't going to change anything just yet. Uh, inevitably, they will, they will have to, it's just not now. So as far as what we can expect from tonight, um, definitely no changes in policy, um, 
perhaps there could be this hinting towards the taper program as an outside risk particularly given what happened with the bank of canada just a week ago i do not think that that will materialize i think the language that we've heard from all of the fed officials tells me that it's too early yet to make those type of noises irrespective of the fantastic consumer confidence yesterday and all the other figures that have been lining up showing that the the, the gross kind of story is now underway uh, so we'll be tuned in we'll cover this live for the community um, but not expecting any great surprises there um, also on the calendar the final thing i wanted to uh, just quickly comment on is there is a number of uk european corporate earnings as well to be aware of um, so ahead of the cash open later Santander, Deutsche, Glaxo comes out normally at midday London, so during session, if any FTSE traders. Sanofi, Sainsbury's as well, so quite a few there to, to also keep an eye on. Uh, but that is it, gonna leave it there, let you guys get on with the day. Any questions at all, let me know, and uh, we will see you online for the Fed later. Thanks very much.